Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us on Taylor Tuesday. Um, my name is Dr. Ira Krauss, for those of you who don't know me. And I have joining me tonight uh, Dr. Neil Lanke, who is the uh, CEO and founder of Histologics. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, uh, Taylor Medical before we get started. So again, um, thank you all very much for, for joining us tonight. I, I appreciate that you take away time from your families. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about Taylor Medical. So we started back in uh, probably 2015. Um, Dr. DeSantis and myself uh, decided that we wanted to try and do something that would um, put us on a level playing field for medical supplies and equipment for our practices. And Taylor Medical was started. We went to companies um, that we didn't even know uh, and sold them on a vision. And here we are today in 2023, uh, and we are a thriving um, young company. Uh, I see Dr. Kimball has just joined us. Thank you very much. Uh, we're just starting our introductions. And um, so, you know, for those of you who are not sure about Taylor Medical, uh, we do these webinars once a month. Um, you can see that all of the Taylor Medical webinars are archived. If you go into the upper right-hand corner of our website and click on taylormedical.com, um, you can look for the webinars in the window and you'll be able to see every webinar that um, we've had. So that way, if you want to um, uh, show them to your staff, you, you missed something, you want to get some additional information, we have them available. So what is Taylor Medical and what is a GPO? GPO is a group purchasing organization. Uh, what we've tried to do is allow people or put people in a position who may have a smaller practice, one, two, three, four, five doctors versus another group that might have 25 doctors uh, to be able to purchase products at a, at, 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 at a good price. Um, but Taylor Medical is more than just a company that um, sells you products. We, we, we try and do a variety of other things. We, we, are, we try to educate you on implementing things to your practice. Like I know today you're going to learn a little bit um, from Dr. Lonke about um, his debridement device. This device also can be used uh, for billing purposes, depending on what procedures that you're doing. So our, our goal is, with Taylor Medical is to not just sell you something. We want to teach you how to use it and, 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 and how to benefit from it and how your practice benefits from it. So um, I got to tell you something, though. It, it's a secret. Don't tell anybody. We don't charge anybody anything. So, yes, to be a member of Taylor Medical, there is no charge. We do a free cost analysis on your practice. Uh, all you need to do is send in um, the, the products that you're currently using. If there are some vendors where we can help you download everything in a digital SKU, if you can't do that, we can take invoices. Ultimately, we need your vendor, the item description, the manufacturer, the SKU, the unit of measure, and the price. Send all that over to our staff, um, Carla, Ashley, or Brooke at admin at taylormedical.com and we will get you a cost analysis. Uh, we have 29 different vendors offering a variety of different um, products and options. I tell everybody, before buying anything, give Taylor Medical a chance. Take a look at everything, see what we have, see how we can help you practice. So um, that, that's, that's, that's a little bit about Taylor Medical and who we are. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk about our vendor tonight that we have, Dr. Neil Lanke. Um, he is... Um, uh, the CEO and founder of um, Histologics. Um, Histologics is a medical device company that is dedicated to the diagnosis and effective treatment of tissue-based disease with a compassionate approach. And I, I can tell you that being somebody who is in the critical limb ischemia world, limb salvage, uh, sometimes debriding those wounds can be very painful. Um, he's a clinical professor of OBGYN at the University of California, Irvine, and still practices gynecology part-time. Dr. Lanke received his BA from SUNY Buffalo and his MD from SUNY Stony Brook. If I'd have known that, I might not have let him come on. Uh, internship and residency from Harbor UCLA in obstetrics and obstetrics uh, and gynecology, public health degree in health policy and management for UCLA. He's the former elected director of the South California Kaiser Permanente Medical Group, multi-awarded researcher and recipient of exceptional contribution alumni awards from both SUNY Stony Brook and UCLA School of Public Health. 
As a multi-patented inventor of Histologic's core platform technology, the Kylon Medical Fabric, Dr. Lanky has envisioned and Histologic's has accomplished the transformation of cervical slash vaginal biopsy becoming the 21st century minimally invasive brush biopsy tissue, trap gentle experience versus the feared metal cutting tool biopsy of the early 20th century. Histologic's trademarked the new experience as a high quality compassionate um, uh, colop, I can't pronounce this, colposcopy. Um, the, award-winning, the award-winning Kylon device technologically has moved into the wound care field, not only evidence-based for wound biopsy, histology, and biofilm diagnosis, but also as a compassionate personal wound debridement practice technology that, would, that wound care providers across the spectrum of expertise, from non-trained caregivers to advanced wound care practitioners in nursing, podiatry, and surgical medicine will find the value. This is a compassionate debridement at your fingertips. Well, that left me a mouthful of stuff. But anyway, <laughs> Dr. Lockie, I, I really appreciate you for um, for joining us. I know that you've had a chance to visit with uh, Dr. DeSantis when you were when he, uh, out in Orange. Um, Dr. Kimball, thank you for joining us as well. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you, Dr. Lockie. I'm going to let you run the show. I'm going to turn my microphone off, take my picture off, and I'll come back on for Q&A at the end. How's that sound? Sounds great. Sounds great. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Kraus, Ira. Uh, thank you for all who are attending, and thank you, Tracy Kimball, who's a star surgeon, a really proactive person who leaned in and really got this technology under her belt. She provided some of the videos you're going to see today, and I'll let her comment when we get to some of the clinical stuff. But I'm going to give you the background. I'm going to give you why we went into wound care. I'm going to give you some of the particulars on the value base and then how to use it in your practice and your usual coding and billing practice as well. So um, these are tissue based technologies. So we're both removing tissue for sampling and we're also removing tissue to debris biofilm and necrotic tissue from wounds. The interesting thing is we think we can do a lot more of it than people are willing to do. And we have to do more of it than people are willing to do. And I think with the minimally invasive approach you'll see today, it's going to be an option, uh, not only for you as podiatrists, but your maybe some of the people that you work with who are mid-levels or they're advanced wound care trained nurses, uh, a physical therapist, you go going around in assisted care or long-term care facilities. You'll see this is very versatile. Versatility is the key word for this, as you'll see. So we're trying to replace or just augment, I think is a better word, the reusable surgical cutting stainless steel, sometimes expensive, sometimes not. A blade is not that expensive. And if you're using reusables, they should be sharpened. But this is a lot to do with OBGYN in a way. They use reusable tools that need to be sharpened. In podiatry, you're using some disposables. So I'd say that this is an augmentation. Another option, especially when you kind of match it to the patient type or the wound type. This is not cutting, this is friction. And it debonds the tissue, the necrosis from the underlying dermis in a very sequential measured way that is precise. So one of the things you worry about is digging too deep, taking out the healing tissue, you'll see this is giving you this something that you really have an option to, to do a much more precise debridement and fast. The fabric itself, this is hard to read, but the fabric itself kind of looks a little bit like Velcro. It's woven nylon hooks that are fenestrated or cut and they're conditioned a certain way and they're, their geometry is a little different so that when they're placed flat onto a surface, only the tips stick up and they're curettes. So on a typical device, which I'll show you, there's between 25 and 50 curettes on a finger, on an applicator stick, as you'll see. You're used to using a dermal curette with a very small face. This has got a bigger face and you'll see the two different variations on the applicator stick that we have out now. Uh, Kylon um, uh, has, is very protected by intellectual property. So how do we say that, oh, that never existed before and now it's going to approach the standard of care? Well, look at all the things that happen in medicine. You know, we used to open people and now we do scope surgeries and we do endoscopies and we do things in the OR 
that are, or we take them out of the OR and move them into the office practice. Um, I'll talk about a case at the end if I have time that someone always took someone to the OR and was able to do the case in the office due to the minimally invasive nature of our devices. The devices are soft biopsy, then a soft biopsy where you get the instructions for use to do debridement with it, a soft KRET, which is which I'll show you is for crevices like between the digits and the toes. Uh, into folds of tissue, soft K-cot, which goes mounted on a finger. Uh, and then, you know, there's been about 1.5 million biopsy or debridement episodes using this product in the market to date. It's single-use disposable, which makes it safe because you don't want to reuse a product, autoclave it, leave particulates, and potentially transfer something to a patient. And the price compared to, let's say, a curette or even a scalpel blade is higher, but you'll see the value you get for what you pay for. And with uh, Taylor Medical, they've negotiated a lower price for you. Uh, when people use our product, it approaches 90% people reorder it. So they see the value. They see it sometimes as a complete replacement for the debridement tool, sometimes as an augmentation for certain patients, certain wounds, certain settings, as you'll see. Um, this is something we learned at Kaiser that I'm passing along to everybody. Um, Value-based care, you've heard a lot about it with podiatry now, about prepayment. You take, you know, like an HMO, you take the payment, cure the patient, right? Well, it's going, kind of going that way, but we've been doing it at Kaiser for years, and this is the way we measured it. How much improvement is there in the quality? Service means patient and provider satisfaction. Access means throughput. How quick can you take take the patient from, from bad wound to healed or from procedure length, how long it will take you over the cost to buy the device? And you'll see that with the Kylon fabric-based devices, you're increasing the numerator and the denominator is a little bit more, but when you do the value equation, it's high value. There's a FDA registration it's a biopsy brush and it's a curette. And it also traps tissue for biopsy. So it's a pathology container. And I'll show you that when we look at the video, you'll see the, how that works. Um, we sent this card out for OBGYN and for uh, podiatry and other wound care providers uh, when we first started in wound care. And it was like, look at the 19th to 20th century instruments on the left and look at the 21st century instruments on the right. Look how easy it is to do this. Look, you can even put it on your fingertip and do a procedure uh, for the wound care. Look, it takes a biopsy sample in five seconds, literally, and you don't have to collect any tissue or sweep it up. And I'll teach you about curatage versus punch biopsy for biofilm analysis with molecular testing with culture in the, in the lecture. So you'll see how ergonomic in that value equation, it's fast. It traps all the tissue immediately, so it's very accurate. This is what you're used to using for biopsy and for curetting, and I'm not saying you shouldn't use that and you won't have needs. I should have had a scalpel blade picture on there too, but I didn't, and I should, because you use that all the time as podiatrist. In fact, I have a video I'll show you where it's a combined Kylon KRET debridement with excision of the overhanging wound margins. You can't shave off tissue sharply with this device, so you still need a blade. I really think that for 90% of your cases where you'd use a dermal curette, you're going to use a Kylon curette instead. These are the two brushes. The top is soft biopsy. There's going to be a version you'll see, and I'll show you in the presentation, that's going to be clear in color. That's for the debridement. That This one above is, think of it like what goes back to a lab after you do the debridement. We'll talk about billing and coding for that. But after you do the debridement, you've cleared away the necrosis. You've got to the base of the wound, you've got biofilm, you wanna sample it, literally, you put it in your hand on the wound, twist it, take it out, snap the tip off and done. You've got the biopsy in about 10 seconds. Same with the soft KRET in crevice biopsy tissue, and you'll see a case on that too. Okay, here's the next one. The bottom version is clear, it's like uh, crystal. That is the uh, soft biopsy plus D. When you order that, as clinicians, you should order that because that does debridement and biopsy. The top one is more of a lab-related supply. So with Taylor Medical 
uh, providers, you're going to want the clear one because it allows you to do the debridement where the Kylon fabric is at a right angle to the handle. The blue one that you saw before, that's at a parallel to the handle. So there are geometries where wounds are better shaved with the, with the fabric parallel and sometimes perpendicular. This is perpendicular. So you've got wound and necrotic debris and you're going across the wound and then you're basically rototilling the wound when you press and twist. So I say it's debridement with a twist. It's not martini with a twist, which some of you, I hear it's eight o'clock there now. So some of you are drinking a martini right now while you're watching this, but it's debridement press and twist and that will shave auger, uh, rototill. I tell people it's like you have something on your lawn, you can sweep it with a brush. So if you use this device as a brush, you can just lightly sweep it or you can press it in and twist it. And now you're basically rototilling the soil. Clumps of sod come up. You collect it within the rows of the hooks. And that's how you take a biopsy or remove tissue for debridement. Um, this, I was going to show you a case of soft biopsy. So I'm going to switch to the video um, and show you the biopsy. If I, yeah. So that's a venous ulcer, so it's very sensitive. So they're going very, very gently. And that's a diabetic foot ulcer, a large one, where she's debrided the wound already, and now she's excavating. Okay, actually, I didn't press play. Uh, when you're ready. Uh, did you see that, uh, Ira? Could you see that video? No, you have to repeat. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it. Now it's, there it goes. Now you can see it, right? Yes. Yes. So that's a, that's a venous ulcer. Uh, and that is a DFU that's been debrided, and now it's being biopsied uh, by the provider. Probably more rotations than you need. Made sure she got tissue in there. She's showing me the tissue. And then she, this is just a model of how to snap it off and drop it in the vial. And that's what she just did there. So now we're going to go back to the slides. Okay, it's not going back. Oh, there we go. All right, so that's what you're looking for, tissue trapped in the, in the material, and you get this micropunctate bleeding on the tissue surface. That's good for wounds. Tracy will speak a little bit to that because she did a poster at SAWC at the last meeting um, and in the fall, and, and she'll speak a little bit on that when we get to that. Uh, the biopsy tip is separated from the handle. That's what you're looking for. And then you drop it in the molecular vial. That's a molecular vial. And uh, I'll teach you why biopsies are, no matter what biopsy you do, we just make an easy, fast, compassionate one. But, you know, all our research has shown that we're, you know, there's research that's published about the gentle approach of this product versus Sharps. In, in, so um, access, let's talk about access. This tangential biopsy approach or this sweeping motion, which large face instruments, including that finger cot, which I'll show you, just gets rid of the debris and biofilm very fast because you've got literally 25 to 50 curettes on your finger or on the stick. So they're sweeping the stuff off much faster than you're gonna shave and then you're gonna wipe and shave and wipe with the dermal curette, um, I think you'll find this to be very ergonomic. The one thing that people ask me is, when the fabric gets all filled up with goo, how do you clean it? Don't use gauze, because gauze will pull into the hooks and you'll start pulling hooks. You will put it into the package that it came in, you'll leave it a little bit of space, you'll pour some vosh, some, you know, uh, or some saline or something in the package, you'll wipe it out with your finger in the package and it's contained, so it's not gonna spray. And then you'll put the package in the trash, in the, in the uh, contaminated trash, in the biohazard, and you'll keep going. You can, use, you can clean it out once. These things are made for certain size wounds, three by three wounds for the smaller devices, six by six wounds for the finger cut. But if you use two finger cuts, you can do larger because you have bigger surface area. 
And that's what you're going to be looking for. The patient care experience, it's just a gentle biopsy experience. Oh, you just have to see one and do one, and then you'll tell your friend about one. There's a very wide area that you're sampling while you're doing it. If you're doing punch biopsies, you've got to do multiple, and then you've got to pull them out, and you've got to control the bleeding. This causes minimal bleeding but gets to the correct depth. So I'm going to go through stuff that I learned not only through my own research but in collaboration with Gregory Schultz, who's sort of a very published and appreciated expert in biofilm from the University of Florida. And when he heard that I had this device, he said, well, I've been teaching tangential biopsies is the best way to do it, but we never had something so easy to use and so rapid. And uh, it just does what I was teaching without the fuss. So, um, I know Ira's given a talk on molecular testing. I think it's called total molecular. I might be wrong, but there are many labs out there that are doing molecular now. And they want biopsy specimens are, are, are very robust because they're deep. Uh, if you do the Levine Zivsov method, as you'll see, it's a little compromised. Um, first thing is in 2010, the PCR revolution started with this publication by Melendez, and it said it's rapid. Why? It was taking a long time, people were getting sicker when they had antibiotic need or some kind of treatment, and they were waiting for the cultures to come back. So this, you know, this can be done very rapidly within a day. And P, not only PCR, but next generation sequencing now. And uh, biopsy is the gold standard, okay? And there's three techniques now. And, uh, this basically taught that um, the you need to debride a wound before you sample it, and you should get the necrotic slough off the wound and then get to the viable base. At the viable base, you'll still have a little bit of planktonic or aerobic an or organisms, but you'll have non-planktonic biofilm and meshed and mucopolysaccharides at the base. You, the Levine swab is kind of like it's like sweeping the ice and then with this it's like shaving the ice it's getting into the level that you need to get to those anaerobes uh i don't know why this came out but this is also another study that showed that the living swab has some some drawbacks this was a guideline from 2014 the escmid the, it's the infectious disease group, and they concluded that a soft tissue sample from the base of the debrided wound should be examined. So we, this is a repeated uh, theme. Biopsy tissue is better evidence than swabs. Swabs are free for you. You get them from your lab. Biopsy devices have a cost associated with them. So for podiatrists, that are not getting them from labs sometimes labs will provide them for a low cost as well but i'd say you're better off buying soft biopsy d because you can do the debridement or the biopsy with it um, the soft biopsy is really a lab supply dr schultz actually helped write the consensus guidelines for the identifying identification and treatment of uh, biofilms and chronic non-healing wounds and it was published in this wound, from the wound healing society uh, proceedings and this was the thing that said biofilms are very important you need to remove them you need to study them you need to analyze them you need to eradicate them but you need to get to them and it's the sample it's the sample so single biopsies can miss things because they're focal but they recommended curettings, wider area, take more of the area that's at risk, less of a chance of missing one of the organisms. And one thing people worried about was if I take a lot of biopsies and I'm doing all this, am I causing the wound to slow heal? Is it compromising the wound? And that's a no. This was the poster that we started out with. Some of these pictures are the same, but you can see on the lower left, that this is true histology. We, we ran it alongside the culture and showed that there's a histology. It's actually taking biopsy. And the biopsy is being placed in the vial 
and the vial is being vortexed and all the organisms are being released into the solution. And then they're running the PCR off the organisms that fall out of the tissue. So when you think of biopsy, you think, is a biopsy a nerve or a, a, a noun or a verb? Well, it's a noun when you get a biopsy, but it's a verb when you do a biopsy. And when you do a biopsy, it's actually a procedure and that is got a CPT code. But what the pathologist gets or the lab gets is the noun biopsy. So they're processing tissue based on their CPT codes and how they prep it and how they analyze it. So hopefully that's something that you didn't know because I learned a lot of that in my GYN side of this business, which we've been doing for years. Let's switch to the finger cot, which I'm holding here. We're gonna to get to Tracy's part in a second. She's gonna talk you through the cases that she had. Tracy, I don't know if I, um, <clears throat> I know you're listening. Oh, you're there, good. Can, can you say something so I know you can talk? I can't hear you because I'm, I'm the presenter. But uh, what I'm gonna do is show your videos, but then you're gonna give a narrative after I'm done and just talk about what your experience has been, okay? So this KCOT is really the game changer. My non-fellow podiatrist, because I'm an OBGYN, but um, I say, yeah, you know, we both treat things below the waist, but you know, what can I say? This is, uh, you're like kinship there, but this is the important thing. This is not something you've ever seen before. This is a game changer. This makes your life faster. This makes your life more compassionate. This makes the patient's patient care experience something where you might try a topical and do the debridement in the office versus considering maybe in a bigger wound like six by six of even trying to take a patient to the OR or do injections. So I think you have some real options with this and you gain speed. Um, the, the interesting thing is these bristles stay upright. They're like bristle brush, they're like brush, brush bristles. But when they're pressed flat, you can feel points. Those are the curettes. So once you flatten those hooks, they become uh, hooks. So this would be wound hygiene. This would be raking, something that you'll see Tracy do in her case, one of her two cases. And then the first one, the just wiping is the second case you'll see, where she's doing it on a venous ulcer and it's extremely sensitive and she needs to be really gentle, but she's getting micropunctate bleeding. And as you know, we're doing some studies. We plan to look at the effect of micropunctate bleeding on blood flow to the wound and see if we can enhance it. And of course, things where we can detect biofilm like moleculite or uh, fluorescent spectroscopy, where you're looking for pseudomonas and other organisms, you can see it. You can actually eradicate it and show how much you really get off with this thing. You can't debride black eschar, highly fibrotic tissue, very solidified tissue, the, the solid wound margin at the skin level. But you certainly can go into the margin underneath where it's undermining and do it. So this is not the replacement for a scalpel. But I think that for most cases where you're going to use a sharp curette, it is. Not all, but most. I'm going to show you how we debrided a banana, and I want to, before I show it, I want to thank the banana for its participation in this um, video. Let's see if we can do it. Here we go. The purpose of this video is to describe the versatility of the soft K-cut as a hygienic mechanical debridement device or a surgical excision device or a tissue capture or biopsy tool. Okay. The soft K-cot has Kylon fabric on the tip that when upright behaves like a brush, but when pressed flat, exposes the tips of the hooks, which become micro curettes. There are about 50 on the tip of this device. The cot is basically rolled on the finger and deployed to be used for debridement. And if it's loose on your, if your finger is thinner, you can anchor it with your thumb. And then to do light debridement, mechanical debridement, wound hygiene, or non-selective debridement, there's a wiping motion that occurs to debride the slough from the wound very efficiently, as you can see. 
and it captures the slough within the hook array. Should not compromise the ability to do this pretty lengthy procedure. But if you hit an area that's semi-solid and you want to deploy the curettes, you press the tip of the device in and you expose the curette tips to the, and you basically press and rotate and now you're excising tissue. And you can see that there's a crater that's formed in that area intentionally. The, the actual debridement can occur as a mixed debridement or purely surgical debridement or purely mechanical. If it's a very light stroking, we would call that wound hygiene. And the billing and coding is done respective to the preparation. If a biopsy is needed, we do recommend you use SFT1000 or soft biopsy, but if you want to use a bigger face, you have to deploy a new finger cot. You have to take a new cot and place it on the finger to get the pristine sample, especially if it's from microbiology or histology. You don't want to use the necrotic slough, which might confound your results. I hope that explains how the versatility of the soft K cot allows you to do multiple levels of debridement using the same debridement. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show Tracy's cases, but she'll talk about them after I speak. Um, the, the first one will be a, D, a mixed DFU. The second one will be a VLU. You can see the size of the wounds. One she deployed on her index finger, one on her thumb. Maybe she'll tell you why. Maybe she won't. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay, let me get the videos. All right. So Tracy had, oh, I guess there's audio in this one, Tracy. You'll hear, I get, they got the one with the audio, so. Oh, very nice, okay. All right. So she's spraying it with some antiseptic. You wanna talk? Go ahead, Tracy. Yes, we can do yeah. it. So this is a, this is a um, 70, roughly 70 year old female with um, history okay, of diabetes, uh, mellitus type two, um, insulin dependent, uh, longstanding history of uh, lipodermatosclerosis and mixed etiology ulceration. Um, I actually chose to use my finger in this regard simply yeah, because of the positioning. Uh, this patient was seated in a, in a chair um, versus a bed, which you'll see um, I was approaching the ulcer basically straight on. Um, so uh, this particular condom is roughly sized for, you know, a, a, a generic hand size, um, but it works fine on my index or my thumb. Really, what um, that's a good demonstration of why you don't use the gauze, by the way. Um, yep. Yeah. So uh, this patient is a sensate, so there wasn't a lot of necessity need for any pre anesthesia, but otherwise, patients that um, have sensation, we typically put them in a 10 minute EMLA dwell. Um, so, with that, obviously, you can see I'm using sweeping motions, paintbrush motions. To, it, to remove both uh, thin fibrin slough, exudate, and surrounding um, some, high, some surrounding hyperkeratosis to that wound margin. Um, as Neil has suggested in the, in the past uh, conversations, was we have um, mycopunctate bleeding, and uh, which is, certainly is, as you know, uh, in the literature coming out, talking about autologous um, blood clot uh, products um, is inciting an in situ uh, blood clot, which I actually leave in the wound bed. So that was that case. Okay, so I'm gonna do the next video. Okay, Trace. So this patient uh, was in a bed, um, positioned in a bed. Patient is on um, hemodialysis. He's a uh, mid-70s-year-old male um, with end-stage renal disease on hemodialysis with uh, diabetes mellitus insulin-dependent. 
Um, patient also has um, significant arterial calcinosis and a suspected um, underlying etiology of calciphylaxis. In this particular episode of, of wound, um, he is actually being treated with both doxycycline uh, for MMP modulation off-label, as well as uh, sodium thiosulfate, um, and comes in with uh, another mixed um, mixed etiology uh, wound. This is more for a microvascular arterial uh, pathology, uh, verse, and as well as the venous um, vetus component due to his lower extremity hyper chronic insufficiency and chronic venous hypertension that's been right. worked out vascular. So that, that was a much lighter sweeping motion, right? Right. So we used a mo much lighter sweeping motion. We weren't uh, really actually having to remove a significant amount of thin fiber and slough. We were just using utilizing it to stimulate the wound bed and incite more of an acute physiology to just let the senescent wound um, understand that, you know, we're traumatizing it at a, a more microscopic level. So right. that so for us dumb gynecologists, it's scraping off the biofilm and getting the blood flow going so that the thing will Correct. Heal. Got it. Yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Um, this is the soft K-RET. That one is actually our endocervical biopsy device for the canal of the cervix. But boy, does it really work well under the nails and the toenails. You see the tip is one millimeter wide. It's not sharp, but it's narrow enough. You can get under there and get some of that epibulum out of there. And the, the hooks really well, work well for that. Uh, some of you may know Bruce Levine in San Pedro, California. He's a great, great podiatrist, childhood friend of mine from New York. Uh, he took this wound where you can see that the first toe at the base was, had quite a bit of debris and biofilm and he was able to take it off. You can see in the lower left, it's nice and clean. And then after that, he took another biopsy and put it in the vial. So he needed to take the biopsy for whatever reason he could do it. You usually use a clean one. Don't take, don't use the one that has all the necrotic because if you're looking for a culture, it'll be a lot of staff and it may confabulate the, the, the culture result. If you go on our website, you can see uh, we have really nice videos. I show this for the OBGYN side, but there's case videos up there. There's four, eight publications, either peer reviewed um, articles or, ab or published abstracts in women's health and foreign wound care. This is a great video when you have time that tells you the entire value equation that I pretty much went over in the talk, but there may be a few pearls in there you might want to pick up. Now we get it to the part that David Lerman, uh, that Jeffrey, I keep saying David because I work with a David Lerman. Uh, Jeffrey Lerman helped us with, with all the codes for debridement. It's also able to code when you're prepping a wound bed for a graft. If you're using graphs, this is an amazing way to prep a wound bed for a graft. In fact, we're talking to a couple of the companies about standardizing how graft beds are pet prep because there's so much variability. And you can imagine with this or with with uh, this device, uh, you can, you're can you not going to go too deep. You're only going to go one to two millimeters into the wound. One of the plastic surgeons on our advisory board, Mark Susky, says that this is like Mohs surgery for wounds that you can go layer by layer and really precisely get down, but not go too deep. So you've got your um, tangential biopsy code. You can't get that code paid if you're doing debridement at the same episode as you know. So you, what you might wanna do is debride the wound, see how it's doing in a, within a week. Uh, if biofilm is suspected to grow back, you don't have to debride it. It's probably still pretty clean, but it's starting to get contaminated. Take the biopsy because the biopsy will be compensated. It should be compensated at that point. If you go into a um, facility like a nursing home and you're instructing the staff who are, tr who are licensed to debride wounds, to clean wounds, they can bill for an institutional non-selective debridement coating. They're not doing the pressing and twisting they're doing just the light wiping that you saw tracy do in the second case and then you've got your um your uh non-selective 97598 debridement code you're used to that if you're using lavage you're using sharp selective debridement with scissors scalpel 
Um, this is the one podiatrists know about. They also know about the 11042, 43, and 44 codes that go a little deeper. So if, and you know, you're sizing the wound and you're talking about additional wounds. I think this is not a coding and billing lecture, but I think you're all familiar with this. Just understand that these are FDA registered as brushes for biopsies, curettes for debridement, and tissue trap containers to bring a sample back to the lab. So you've got all the substantiation on the codes when you, when you notate the procedure to say, I used an array of micro curettes to debris the wound to a level of a non selective debridement or a selective debridement using the press and twist method and you describe it in your note and that's the way it is in the package insert and that's the way it's defined so that's the last thing i think i added this slide um what is it about a wound graft how many of you you're using it are they really that much different than each other they all kind of work some may be better than others but you have the patient factors that you're dealing with with your medications, controlling diabetes, improving nutrition. If you're a vascular patient, maybe you're doing an anastomosis, you're getting that blood flow back. Well, what if frictional debridement can help the blood flow, or at least look temporarily? Uh, we have evidence of that visually. You saw her debridements. So we're trying to facilitate healing, but, but the one thing we can't do, and it varies from all of you and nurses and MDs, and physical therapists who are practicing grafts is how fastidious is the debridement? How comprehensive? Is it at the right depth? Are you going too deep? Are you going too shallow? Are you leaving too much necrosis? Are you afraid because the patient's yelling at you, it hurts too much? So you just lay in the graft and hoping for the best. So maybe this is a really great way to do it. It's something that I think you should consider. And these are the codes. Uh, I remember now I put it in this slide. So we mail this out. This is sort of a summary of everything we do. This is something that Taylor Medical has. Taylor Medical has negotiated a better price for you than you can buy from our website. They have an order form. And I wanted to just thank everyone. Uh, there's going to be a Q&A, and I think Tracy might make a few concluding comments. But this is a minimally invasive approach to something that patients otherwise fear. We call it compassionate debridement at your fingertips. It gives you the option to biopsy tissue quickly. It can behave like a brush when you need it. It can behave like a curette or a rake, depending on the depth. So when we think of debridement, we think sharp or mechanical. We don't think one device can do all of it. So that's what we're providing for you. Yeah, and just to summarize, I think uh, the device is, um, the versatility of the device uh, in various different settings, place of service, point of, point of service, um, gives us, the flexibility to choose uh, the KCOT, say, in a nursing facility, and it might be willed by a, uh, a nurse or an advanced uh, practitioner rounding in that uh, scenario um, where they're just trying to provide wound hygiene. Um, if you need to do a biopsy to collect for culture or NGS or, gen you know, genomics, um, you know, you can still send for aerobic anaerobic culture. You're increasing the fidelity of those results because you're capturing the tissue, which will then capture the embedded viable non-culturable bacteria that you would otherwise only extract or not extract uh, if you perform the Levine technique. And then if you wanted to perform a more aggressive uh, procedure with the press and twist technique, then you might choose something handled, but you could still also use the KCOT. Um, and so just the, the, the portfolio opportunity and products uh, from Histologics for wound management um, helps me maybe reduce the even need to actually reach for a scalpel or a curette. Um, you, just, you just reminded me, I forgot to show yeah. one video. Is it okay, Tracy, if I show yeah. it? It's because these are podiatrists. They use the scalpel blade like we use a scalpel blade, but they use it a lot more. And, right. uh, and I want to show them a combined debridement where you have this overhanging, you know, you have the undermined wound, but you have the skin edge you need to shave. So I'm going to show this one. So we call that fashioning the wound edges, which we know in the time in the mm -hmm. time uh, dynamic um, edges is part of that. So um, tissue infection, um, moisture, and and edges are right. what needs to be addressed with your uh, protocols that you right. you approach a wound. Right, and and he's doing it so he can undermine and getting under the edges. 
but he's using the one that's flat. We have a new one that's coming out that's curved. It's not out yet. It's called K Bride. Um, but you can see that he's really getting into the edges and he's going very, even though it looks pretty aggressive, he's going layer by layer instead of shaving off regenerating tissue. So I think that's the, maybe the benefit of the combined debridement. So yeah, he's going to still have to use his scalpel blade. And you can see that now he's going to do a little bit of that. So just like you'll, most of you podiatrists do all the time. For me, it's new. I'm learning as I go and I'm very appreciative that I get to work with Taylor because I'm learning, meeting a lot of people. So I'm standing in for Ira. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Thank you so much for attending. And uh, next month, we our uh, webinar is with Swift by Emblation. Um, Tracy, go ahead on mute. And we'll have Dr. Robert Conale Con Con Conanello, excuse me, and he is going to be giving kind of a testimonial about how to use that SWIFT technology um, and, um, and how he's been able to create a, a really significant revenue stream with that for his podiatry practice. So we look forward to uh, everyone attending next month, and thank you for attending tonight. And yes, Dr. Lonke, you're correct. This will be recorded. We'll be sending this will be on our website. We'll put it out on social media, and it'll be in our next newsletter as well. Okay. So the upper left hand, I see the the telephone. I hang up. Yes. All right. Well, thank you all for thank you. My turn to end the. Thank webinar. you so much for allowing us to participate today. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Kimball. Thank you so thank much. You, Thank you, Dr. Bye. Kimball. Bye. Bye-bye.